Hey, what's up guys? This is Tan Tan here. And so the other day, I have to clean up my studios and also oh, my display shelf. They have been there a really long time and I haven't got a chance to actually wipe all the dust from it. So I took everything out and I find that this is a good chance to show you my entire collection. So to begin with, I'm gonna start with the old Autobots from the Studio Series line that I possess. So this list is, I think this is the most accurate and like I nearly got everything. So if I miss anything, tell me in the comment section below. And before we start, I still haven't purchased Blur yet. I'm gonna wait for the Shadow Glass version. I like that one better. And also Left Foot because he is a exclusive. So I haven't been able to find him. So let's begin. So first up is the Studio 3 number one. This is the old Camaro Bumblebee from the 07 movie. So I got this figure before I start the channel. So I haven't got time to review it. So this is actually the first time I, I actually handling this guy on camera. So after all those years, I think he's still solid figures. There's still some aspect that I feel like he can be improving, except ex especially the hollow back. But I guess that for the first figures of this line, they've done a great job. If there's anything I want to improve upon him, that could be the thickening arms. So I really hope that they're gonna release a 2.0 version of this guy sometime in the future and focus up the arms. Because I think from this angle, this torso and leg section looks really good. He's got some nice paint on it, but like the arms are too thin. So he come with a blaster and that's it. So I think to put that in, you're just gonna pluck this out and we're just gonna try to pluck this in. I, I really hate this kind of attaching because it's just so hard. Oh, there we go. And he looks pretty nice with this blaster on, but I wish that it is it has been a little bit longer. So moving on. Next up is the Studio Series number four, Ratchet. So also like O1 Bumblebee, I haven't got a chance to review this guy anytime because I opened the channel later from his release. This guy has two versions. Actually, I missed the number Studio Series number 16 as well, which is the Ratchet Dark of the Moon. It got a different shade of green, some white, and it comes with a blaster instead of the saw. I chose to went with this Ratchet for my collection because I got him first, and the other reason is that I enjoy the saw. This has got a really nice silver paint and detail on it. And I think a Rush product for the Studio Series line. Because as you can see, this lacks a lot of paint, especially the whole body and the face section. And it's just plain and you got a huge backpack over here. So in my opinion, this is clearly a sign of like the rushing, they're rushing out. And it clearly shows that they haven't thought it through when they made these figures. Yeah, a lot of things can be improved for in Ratchet. So I really hope for the 2.0 because like what I said, this is the premature time of the Studio Series line. All of the figures are brand new and they haven't got a chance to really talk it through and think where this line is heading. So I really hope for another Ratchet figure. Next up is the Studio Series 05 Optimus Prime from the Voyager class. So this is the first Optimus of the Studio Series line. And I must say, he has done a pretty great job at creating a role model for upcoming Optimus Prime figure, especially the SS. I think it's the number 32, which is a really good Optimus. And what can I say, that this Optimus is actually based on the Transformer Prime Voyager class, Optimus Prime. So that there is still a lot of resemblance, especially the chest section here. But one thing about this mode that led to the affection of the, all the Optimus is that with the Prime versions of Optimus, he doesn't have a sword that sprang out the arms. He actually just held it on, so they made a couple energon split and you cannot actually like attach them here but then you have to plug it onto his underneath his hand and be like that i mean it still works somehow but from the movie i would prefer to see the hands of optimus as well but like this is a great start it shows that the this line the studio series line has like really care about scaling and they even put optimus as a voyager instead of a, of a leader class and that is really encouraging because back in the days, all Optimus Prime toys has been tagged as a leader class because that is Optimus and a leader class has a higher price. 
So yeah, they would make a lot more profit. But with the serial storyline, they start that like okay, for prime size in the movie and in the continuity, he is just a voyager. In my opinion, that is really impressive, and this is a great change. <laughs> Next up, we have the Studio Series number 07 Grimlock, and I must say, up from up till this day, this guy is a pain in the ass to get into the camera. I tried to put him on camera once, but then he's too big of the leader class. And this is the first time that we got a Grimlock that is actually movie accurate. I mean, like I enjoy everything about this guy: the color scheme, the transformation, and of course the proportion. Because the last figure Grimlock we received was a. Uh, Age of Extinction figures and I must say I absolutely despise that figure the proportion looks way off and it just look, look ridiculous but upon the studio series version we got a really nice transformer of toys of Grimlock and like I mean like of course they have to sacrifice this transforming mechanism that's so like he doesn't actually transform like in the movie and of course he lacks his maze but that can be done by having the DNA upgrade kit but upon that what I really enjoy about this guy is that he's so movie accurate they even try to make he got the two dinosaur head shoulder armor and he's way too green and that is movie ac movie accurate right there yeah I cannot wait for the other Autobots to come into studio series scale but I just gotta wish that they have their full weaponry on unlike Grimlock here so yeah the problem with Grimlock is that he lacks his maze should he come with his maze, this figure should have been a perfect score for me. The next one we got would be the Studio Series number 10, Jazz. I got this guy around the December of 2018. Oh wait, that was a really, really long time ago. So when I saw this guy and I got this guy, I immediately fell in love with him. I enjoy all of the proportion, the design, and this just shows that the Studio Series line has gone into a really long way since the first figure. But then okay, I guess the masterpiece came out and I like, I was looking at this figure like what? But in my opinion, this is a still nice figure. He's smaller than most of the deluxe class because he's a small Autobot, and I enjoy that of him. And the way he hands are like it's really funny as well. I enjoy that. And for the masterpiece version, of course we have the individual articulated fingers, but for the studio series, we don't we cannot ask for that. Again, his accessories also an interesting way of attaching. So you're just gonna flip this out, flip this out, and you're gonna attach his gun right in, just like that. And that looks really nice. His gun looks really nice for a studio series for Deluxe Plus. I absolutely enjoy this gold painting of all the barrels over here. That is really nice. And the other way you can attach it is to plug it right there. And there we go. Two ways of attaching. And this guy came in like we nearly finished the first movie Autobots crew. And that is really impressive to have them in a much more what can I say, affordable price and a better quality than what you would expect it from the past. This is really nice figure right here. So I that is why I fall in love with this Studio Series line. Next up we have the Studio Series number 14 Iron High. This is a Voyager class and what can I say? He suffers from the same problem as Ratchet where like his accessories are painted really nice but his overall body lacks a lot of paint. This is way too lazy right here. Especially with after Jazz, I mean like Jazz is a really great figure with I mean like really great painting and details But this guy is like a pure black. He looks like my wardrobe But then again, this is still one of the nicest and best figure to hardest figure to find and somehow my copy has got this Painted spilled out, but if you look at this size right here, he got a great eyes paint and This he remains until this day one of the hardest figure to find I mean like I, w I try to find a Studio Series Ironhide to customize and to paint the colors because in the case I ruined the first one I still got a backup one but up to this day I cannot afford to find any other figures of any versions of this guy for a good price they are really all expensive and yeah that is frustrating this guy is really hot and I don't think that Takara or has and Hasbro has a plan to re-release this guy anytime in the future but maybe if they could, you know, Dark of the Boon versions instead of Twist to Cannon comes with his other guns and uh, I don't know, so what better paint job? That would be really nice. Now we get to the bad stuff, I suppose. This is the Studio Series number 18 Bumblebee from Bumblebee 2018. And I really don't like these figures because the problem with this guy is like the same with his masterpiece counterpart. They are rushed into R&D and then production. So in result, we got a tons of back cables, a not so really detailed transformer. And that is just it. Plain boring in so many ways. 
I mean like the only saving grace of this guy is that his many accessories so you got a, an alternate face which is nice you got a arm blade which is nice I guess and you got a replacement for the handgun I mean like this is a straight up copy of the first studio series but the problem with this guy is that he lacks in length and in size just look at that so yeah I'm not really recommending this guy and I hope that he got some upgrades in the future <laughs> Next up, we have to the Studio Series 26 and one of my most hated figures. This is the World War II Bumblebee from The Last Knight. Look at that, he cannot even stand by himself. It is really hard because they designed to his as the ankle to be in one specific pose, like like this. So if you try to stretch, he's gonna fall. And on that, his details are fine, I guess. The color is really boring. The vehicle mode is not going to be accurate. And look at this motherfucking the kibbles over here. And the only nice thing about this guy will be the accessories. So you got one of his different guns from the World War II era. And I think, in my opinion, this gun looks what really nice. And you got his Warhammer. And just buy it. And it just looks great. But I think that I'm gonna wait for the other Bumblebees to let him them hold his timer. And then that, he just himself, you know, nothing too spectacular. Moving on. Next up on the list, we have the Studio Series number 29 Deluxe Class Size Wipe. And this is the Dark of the Moon versions. And I don't think that they're gonna do a revenge of the Fallen versions because there are not too much of a difference between the two versions. Except for the alternate mode, I'm gonna put up on the brother transform that he got on the roof. But look at, looking at this backpack here, I think that is neat enough so he doesn't gonna need any more backpack. And apart from that, for the full lot of his accessories, you got his two double barrel pistol, which looks really nice. And I really enjoyed this because, in my opinion, all the other previous size wipe toys, they are not included with his pistol. So having him having his two guns over here makes me feel really nice. And the fact that the wheels here, the leg here, the feet, got a really nice transformation. And that just made me a lot happy. And just look at those pain apps of the app section that is really beautiful and unlike the old size wipe toy where you got that hanging doors on the arms as a sword now you guys now what you get is like individual attached sword and you're just gonna pluck it right onto the palm like this up oh, the other way my bad you're just gonna pluck it right onto like this and to me this looks really nice and perfect it doesn't need any more updates or anything I mean like this figure is great the way he is just look at those two sword that this that is just really cool i remember watching revenge of the fallen and saw size wipe slicing sideways in half and i mean that that is just so nice that is just beautiful cinema cinema right there and to me he is one of, he's one of the best studio series figures ever that got ever got produced i mean this is like a really nice figure <laughs> Next up, we got the Studio Series number 32, Optimus Prime. And this is the pinnacle of cheap Optimus design. This is the perfect improvement from the Studio Series number 5, which is an improvement of the Transformer Prime mode. This Prime got everything, he just looked really nice, bulky, and overall, the transformation is nice. The only down things about this guy is that he only got his one blaster right here. So that is pretty light, but if you purchase all his Optimus, like the 05, you got the two sword, and then again, you got the 44 is upcoming. But this guy comes in a package. Uh, when they got released, this guy, they released another guy, which I'm gonna add in right away. Next up, we got the Studio Series 35 Jetfire. This is a really nice, and I must say, my favorite leader class of this line. He, what what do you expect? He got his a uh, highly detailed movie accurate in transformation and also in the both modes of him. And it's a leader class. What can I what can we say? And the best thing about this guy is that he can be taken down apart to combine with the SS32 and lay on the 44. And I mean just look at the face sculpt, he's just so full of characters. And the glory five jet fires never stop there. But like, what is the downside of this figure? So in my opinion, the only downside that I have of this figure will be the hands. They are fixed. So you see, this is the holding the act is quite dumb. But other than that, he is a really nice figure. I know that uh, Black Mamba have made a KO of this guy and like they only fix. The only thing they fix is that they add the thumb some uh, joint so he can grab things more naturally. 
and to me that is a absolutely win but i would still recommend the studio series version though he's a, such a nice and compact yet colossal transformer figure next up is the number 36 and this is a jump directly from revenge of the fallen to the last night and here we have drift in his mercedes benz ultimate mode and what can I say except for this is the best drift figure so far. I enjoy all the armor detail. They really, they have really buckled this guy up. The face sculpt is amazing. You got a lot of gold and look at this armor plate. So like underneath this smooth car cover is that this really samurai like armor plate and that is just so beautiful in my opinion. It is so nice. And what is really great about this guy as well is that he comes with a tons of accessories. So I'm gonna put this guy right here. You got two smaller daggers. This is a deck for knife. Got, of course, you still got his two sword, which made from rubber. They look great, they are nice. But then they're gonna if they decide to give you the sword, the really nice and magnificent sword with some gold highlight on it. And when since I got this guy, this is my primary display. Just look at the handle, even the handles they are really nice and detailed. And holding them just makes me feel like he deserved what he needed. For splashing some Decepticons. And one nice thing about this guy is that he came with three miniaturized mini Dinobots. Just look at them, are they cute? They are really nice. I mean, I enjoy having this guy around so much. That is so nice of Hasbro to include them into to this package. That is a really nice thing. The next one is number 38, which is the famous Optimus Prime live action G1 variation. This is the Optimus Prime from Bumblebee. And what can I say? This figure is, it brought me mixed up feelings, you know, like in some way I enjoyed him as a standalone Optimus figure. But still, in some way, I kind of don't like him because of all this junk over here. I know that, like, from this mode, we have a really cool lot of Black Mamba, then we have Wei Jang, and we have Power World, and etc. But this is still the first toy of that Optimus ever came out. And unlike Bumblebee, they actually waited a really long time for this guy. So, I, I mean, in fact, the quality of this guy is better than Bumblebee. Actually, I enjoy this guy more than Moby. So yeah, he's a great figure at the time. So I really hope that in the future, they're gonna make another version of this guy. Especially with some live Transformer live action coming out. Next one we got is the Studio Series number 39, which is Cockman. And this is a really strange thing over here. You see, like in the movie, his this form doesn't appear. We see him driving an Aston Martin, and that's it. Because they actually introduced in the movie that he's a headmaster, but we doesn't get any of that. So yeah, this is the first Studio Series that ever just be produced by a concept. So here we have Cockman over here. Yeah, the only thing I, I enjoy about this guy is the headmaster mechanism because this is a really nice head sculpt. You got a lot of paint going on over here, and it is so well detailed. And just look at this app section here. I enjoy this all this miniaturized details. Everything is just look beautiful, especially this belly part. And you got Excalibur for some reason. Those somehow this is King Arthur now, the King Arthur of the Transformer. <laughs> The next Studio Series on our list and what I consider to be the Studio Series 32 Optimus upgrade package is the 44. This is the Optimus Prime from Dark of the Moon. So essentially this is the same old SS32 and with some a lot of new things. So the first one is that he got an abs now which is the Dark of the Moon look and then he got a trailer and the trailer is comprised of this section over here and the backpack. And that is nearly everything about it and everything else is just like extra and different so you got his two big machine gun you still got his pistol you got a shield you got a battle axe and not painted and you got a an energon blade but this time it is like for holding instead of attaching onto his arms to look alike so it got, it's gonna look like this this is to recreate his scene battling with sentinel and i'm gonna try this is so hard to pull out and there we go, and yeah, I mean like this is a great pack for those of you who prefer his Jack of the Moon look other than his Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, and I'm sorry but I haven't realized that this is already midnight, I'm filming this quite long. So I'm actually gonna, gonna take this video into two parts, so that is just part one. So part two will coming out in the next one or two days. So I hope you enjoyed that video, subscribe to me if you are new to the channel and also follow me on Instagram and if you think that you can help me out with some future figures but feel free to buy me a coffee. link of both my Instagrams and my coffee is down in the description. Turn on out.